Welcome to the Romans 911 Project Podcast, where stepping into the reconnection in the one new man and the fullness of John 17 love and unity is becoming a reality. In each episode, join Grant Barry to drill down deeper into this reconnection and alignment message and the final reforms for the ecclesia, for the church. As we will discover, the reconnection becomes a power key to open the door to God's end-time plans to help restore the family of God for the preparation of the bride, the last great harvest, and Israel's salvation, all of which will lead to the Lord's return. The reconnection message has end-time consequences for us all. Here's Grant. Beloved, we are continuing this podcast discussion who is israel taking us deeper into a place of understanding in these days of restoration and reconnection in the family of god and today we're going to talk about how yeshua actually achieved this shift of authority from the israel of old to the new israel but before i do I really want to emphasize, you know, in last week's podcast, we we talked about the Israel of God. And it's so important for us, especially for God's children from the nations, to understand our equality in the spirit, to be more confident in who we are, so that as the Father looks to restore Israel, it's not that Israel is any better. Um, uh, God has brought us into a oneness, those who are near, those who are far, uh, this beautiful one you man. And there's no difference now between us in the spirit. And there's no second class citizen in the kingdom of God. But as the Lord looks to be, uh, to, to begin to awaken Israel, there's a need for him to actually use us and to come into agreement with him that he can bring forth his covenants and his promises. And that is going to take a great role on our part, not only to to intercede and stand in the gap for Israel to come forth, but also for those of us who live in more heavily populated Jewish areas to really begin to, to get around the Jewish community, to love them, to serve them. And you'll see as you begin to move in that, that uh, the doors that God will open for you um, just to to be able to begin to share your faith. And we know we have to be careful, you know, because Christianity was used so negatively against the Jewish people. We know we have to be careful in how we present the gospel to them, but we also have to learn to help bring them back or put them back on their own bridge of salvation to their own olive tree instead of trying to bring them into a a religion into the christian church that was used to uh, persecute and kill them and so it's really important for us to to learn how to share Yeshua with them. It, it, it doesn't take much. I've, I've written about this in my second book, The Ezekiel Generation. I think it's chapter 11. There are certain words and terminology that we can use that, uh, that we need to use both when we speak and also when we pray that will prevent barriers from coming up uh, more easily when we're, we're sharing Jesus with them. I was brought to faith. I was drawn to jealousy by a Russian girl that had a Jewish grandmother. And she had learned through trial and error how to share the good news, the gospel with Jewish people in a way that helped me find a bridge to salvation that in reality Christianity is Jewish. So I just want to encourage you in that there's no condemnation in the Lord, but we will discover as we go deeper in this journey that the enemy has been using bloodline influences, generational sins, 
lingering influences of replacement theology to keep the church on a separate track. And now the Lord is bringing us into this oneness. There's a place for us to, to reconnect. Uh, that is is significant in 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 this message. I just want I want us to feel comfortable and confident in who we are, so that we are able to be used of the Father um, in in His plans to help bring Israel back to life. So let's look at 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 how Yeshua actually shifted the authority of God. This is this is an interesting discussion. So to gain a deeper understanding of this connection, uh, I want us to take a look at how Yeshua at actually achieved this shift in authority and transferring Israel's authority from the Sanhedrin, which was connected to the Levitical priesthood, to the apostles, who founded the church. Then let's re-examine the different paths of Israel from Yeshua's time to the time of his return when the balance of Israel is restored to help us see the full picture here regarding the whole Israel of God. And I will address the paths of Israel in three separate sections uh, in the next uh podcast. The apostles and the prophets did not actually carry the authority of Yeshua until it was given to them through the Holy Spirit at Shavuot Pentecost. Amazing that the giving of the law and the releasing of the Holy Spirit was exactly the same date. And there's no mistake in that that the old would be transformed into the new. But first, it had to be taken away from the Sanhedrin, from the Levitical priesthood, because of their rejection of Messiah Yeshua, which is vital to our understanding. As Yeshua cried out, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. This is cited from Matthew 23, verse 37. Please try to understand that before Yeshua went to the cross, the priesthood still carried the authority of God that was given to them through Moses at Sinai. I think most of us are aware of that. This is how he referred to them in this light. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. That's Matthew 23, verses 2 to 3. However, as the Lord draws closer to his mission to take up the cross, look what happens to the barren fig tree that he curses. May you never bear fruit again. And immediately afterward, when he arrived in Jerusalem, the Pharisees and Sadducees confront Yeshua over his authority. By what authority are you doing they, these things? They questioned to Yeshua. There are two accounts in the gospel of this story regarding the fig tree. The first is in Matthew and the second is in Mark. And both of them actually precede issues of his authority being questioned by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. This is especially notable in Mark where Jesus actually goes into the temple and ransacks it. How dare you turn my father's house into a den of thieves? I respectfully submit to you that there's something significant about this fig tree incident and that it did not represent Israel 
as a good number of Christian Bible teachers and theologians might point out to us. Rather, the Sanhedrin and the Levitical priesthood, who were the authority of Israel, had become so dried up by their own self-righteousness and religious pride that they were already completely barren and lacked any true life and spirituality. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. That's Matthew 23, 15. Please also try to understand that Jesus was incredibly popular among the people of Israel during his ministry years. This is why the Sanhedrin and many Pharisees were fearful of his influence. And many Jews were drawn to him because they witnessed his love, his compassion, and the healing power of his miracles. And consequently, we now find ourselves at the final juncture of God's mission with his son. The confrontation heats up between Yeshua and the Sanhedrin, culminating with his final rebuke and warning of pending judgment in Matthew 23 and 24, and their final act against him to send him to his death. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. Look, your house is left to you desolate. That's Matthew 23, 13 through 38. Spiritually speaking, through the cross and resurrection, Yeshua was about to move a major mountain and throw it into the sea. The authority of God that had been upon the chief priests and teachers of the law had come to an end. May you never bear fruit again, he said. And it was about to be removed from them and placed on the apostles and the prophets by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this would establish a new foundation on which the ecclesia, the church, the Israel of God would be built through the remnant of Israel and God's children from the nations who were to be grafted into the tree along with believing Israel, who would now fulfill Israel's call to be a light to the nations in a very special place of love and unity, specifically designed by God in the one you man. Beloved, no one speaks or teaches in the church about this mountain that was moved into the sea. But I tell you, it's significant because the Lord had to come first to the house of Israel. Remember, salvation comes from the Jews because Jesus came from the Jews. So he puts an end to the spiritual authority over the priesthood. Then he's immediately challenged by them. Then he goes to the cross, the resurrection, raises from the dead, and 50 days later, releases his Holy Spirit on who? On the new Israel that was to fulfill God's call to be a light to the nations. And they take Yeshua out to the nations so that God's children from the nations could believe in him and become one with them to receive their covenants and promises. And so there's something significant here in the moving of this mountain that enabled the Lord to continue the flow of his presence and his spirit from the Mosaic covenant to the new covenant that then brings both Jew and Gentile into this very special love and unity that changed the world. 
And now that Israel awakens, the Lord looks to restore this special place in us that we would fulfill the only new commandment that Jesus gave to us, that we should love one another that the world would know, John 13, 34 and 35. Beloved, next week, we will continue this discussion on who is Israel with a discussion on God's covenants that are irrevocable. So until that time, may the God of Israel richly bless you. Lots of love to you in Yeshua. Thank you, Grant, for that insightful discussion. To dialogue with Grant and Halley, please send comments and questions to email at romans911.org. Again, that's email at romans911.org. If you resonate with the Romans 911 Project, please pray about partnering with us to bring this reconnection message to the threshold of the church. Sign up for our monthly email. Join our global virtual meetings with other believers to dialogue and pray together. And most important, read the Romans 911 book, Time to Sound the Alarm, and view the Romans 911 study guide 12 to 14 hour video teachings, which are free when you purchase the study guide. The Romans 911 books and teachings are transformational into God's end time plans to prepare the bride and reform the church. They help to create the breakthrough that will change the world. The reconnection message is like a golden key from the heart of the Father to restore love and unity in God's family that opens the door to the fulfillment of Yeshua's prayer in John 17. And it establishes the pathway for the body of Messiah, the body of Christ, to receive the greater glory. Would you pray to give Chai, to give life to the reconnection, to reach the church and the messianic body and help unite the family of God. For more information on the Romans 911 project, please visit our website at romans911.org. It's easy to remember, romans911.org. Please also subscribe to the Romans 911 project wherever you listen to podcasts at the end.